Yes, you are now looking the aftermath of a DOE tester who just smashed holes inside this. Granted, it was rusty. If you watch my other videos on this, you'll see why I just think this is wrong. I uh, should have just failed it, not smashed holes in it. But anyway, we are now here to fix it. We've got a lot of welding to do on this van. But one of the first things we need to do is we need to see just how bad this rust is. Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Yes, we are going to be repairing this rust on both sides and inside because it's failed. Now I can't really see the rust on the inside. I, I, I'm going to have to look again, but it's failed on the inner and outer sills on the back and I can't see. There's one little panel that I can see, but it's not really on the sill. Anyway, that's for another day. Let's just get this done. So what we need to do is we need to repair this. Now we have got repair panels because we got, in this case, I could have made them panels. I'm gonna to have to make panels underneath from scratch, but we got these so cheap, two big, huge repair panels, it wasn't worth my while making it. Um, the time and effort it would have cost to make that rather than to buy them didn't just, it, it wasn't thingy, it wasn't, wasn't worth it. What I'm gonna do is, obviously we're gonna try and cut as least stuff out as we can. We know, hopefully, Oh, I was hoping we wouldn't have to go this far because that's right at the seam. I might have to treat this as a separate thing or come down into here. I have to be so careful trying to do it on that seam. Anyway, that is, I wasn't expecting that. That's a bit annoying. Anyway, um, what we're going to have to do is, and I'm going to do this in a way that people maybe don't like. I'm gonna most probably, I haven't decided yet, when I get into it a bit better, I'll know, but I'm gonna mostly do a lap joint. Lap joints are like the scotch lock of the automotive industry. And look, they, everything has its place. And if you actually think about it, every single joint is a lap joint, just vertical. This is two pieces of metal um, welded together. The, the rain and the, the, all the condensation and stuff, not the rain so much, but the condensation on the inside can stick into here. When you look at how a sill is made, this bottom part of a sill, there's three pieces of metal basically welded together. All the crap can just sit on there and rust it out. So a lap joint, they're all over a vehicle, but people just, just say a lap joint is terrible. Now, when I do a lap joint, I'm gonna do it slightly different. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it with this because it just depends on how high the rust comes. I wanna try and keep it under this lip. Um, but rather than stepping out this panel, I'm gonna step out this panel so my lap joint is actually at the bottom, but it's not, as, as the condensation comes down, it'll just drip off. There's, the, there'll be no lip for it to stick in. But not only that, you can see, you might not be able to see, but believe me, down in there, look, there's another, see that hole? That's, that's, that hole's already there, that's a proper hole. So what you can actually do after that is, you can um, put some um, wax oil in here. So the condensation, the water, whatever, can't stick to it anyway. But the thing with the, with the lap joint is, it's stronger, easier to weld, especially with you know really thin pieces of metal, and it's just quicker to do the job. So, and it's still very, very strong. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get into this a lot better, but first what we need to do, cause we've got a repair panel. I normally I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't break all this or cut all this off, but because we've got a repair panel, we're not worried about shape. We're not worried about anything, but what we do need to do is figure out essentially where our rust Stopped. Isn't it amazing? That is really quite strong there. That's all gone. That's all gone. Unfortunately, that is gone. I was hoping that wasn't. Right, I know my panel comes to here and I know my panel comes all the way 
across basically to there like that. So I want to keep it under this lip. So I'm going to start cutting out this under here like that. Get all this rust out of the way. And see where essentially I can stop cutting. Then I can work out what sort of join I'm doing. Because maybe with this, maybe the, the lap joint isn't going to work. I don't know. I won't know until I get into it. Sorted. All I've done there is just gone through filler. This has been filled. No big deal. But look at this. Wow. That's the biggest problem there. You see that? Doesn't look rusty, but look in behind. And it's all going to be like that everywhere, but we can only replace so much for obvious reasons. Now this is a bit where I have to be careful. Because I can't run into that other panel. And there we go that's kind of the extent of our rust so we need now to figure out um, how I'm going to repair this and what type of join am I going to use I know what kind of join I'd like to use but doesn't mean I can actually use it but what I've got to do first is we're gonna have to we have to get this off now these are drain points here so these holes these little indentations here so get something in them there that's supposed to be there um, you can see it running all the way across and that's supposed to let all the water and crap out but of course it gets blocked full of rust and that's what causes the problems but so We need to get this lip off which is going to be spot welded to this then i'm going to have to cut off the spot welds on here as well get that lip off and then once i've done that i'll work out how i'm going to repair it. all i'm going to do is just going to get the grinder on this grind through where the spot welds are drill them out if not just grind them off same thing on this side and clean it as best i can then i'll turn the camera back on and we'll decide uh, what type of um, repair we're going to be doing. Right, you can see I've done a bit here 
and this is getting a lot worse. Um, there was no hole there until I started grinding, it's knocked it all off. Um, but anyway, you can see the sill that's left here, and all I'm doing, apart from kicking the camera, is getting the grinder on here. <laughs> You can see the spot weld there, but because this metal is so thin, I can actually grind through it all completely. And then what's behind there is the original mount. So So yeah, that's all I'm doing. Looks like I'm gonna have to make all this before I put the new one on, um, which is a lot more work than what I was expecting. But this is the thing with rust. It's not what you can see, it's what you can't see. So let me just get all this clean. I'm just gonna do it off camera because it's gonna be boring just watching. Um, then we can see exactly where we're at. Right, I've really, really hurt my back and I don't know how. I just lifted up the grinder and it just twinged my back. Anyway, so if you hear me kind of do that, you know why. Like, because <laughs> I'm struggling to breathe at the minute. Um, right, what I need to do is I need to make this section of the back panel. Um, just because it's very, very... It's gone through in a few spots. Here is the worst, but it's just very... It's very, very thin. And you might be thinking, well, you know, this is going to be quite difficult to make. No, to be honest, you don't even really need these bits in here. These bits only last till halfway to the van, then it goes flat. So you could get away with just putting a solid straight piece of metal there and angle it up. No big deal. I'm going to keep them in, but what I'm going to keep them in with, very, very simple. I'm going to, I'm going to mold them with a 17 mil spanner. You can see the 17mm spanner fits in and it's more or less at the same height as the panel. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this panel from most probably there to there. And I'm going to go from here to the middle here because all this is flat and then there's just like a 45 degree bend and then these two bends. So it's fairly straightforward. So once I've measured the panel and cut it out, I'll show you me doing it, but I'm going to go to the bench. I'm just going to put the spanner on top of the metal and I'm just going to start hitting around I'm going to bend it first and then I'm just going to start well I don't know I'm going to bend it first or I'm going to hit it I haven't decided yet because sometimes if you make these sort of grooves it's very difficult to bend it and then sometimes if you bend it and you do the grooves it flattens it all out but anyway I'll work that out in a second but essentially all I'm going to do is put the spanner in behind it and hit it. it's not going to be exactly the same as this but with with the hammer as I'm coming over the spanner, it's going to make this kind of angle somewhat. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be the relief we need within this panel. And then just weld it into there, then I can weld my new panel over the top. And I've got some, here is nice and solid, nothing wrong with that. It's just here. And this is what I was also talking about, the lap joint. So this is essentially a lap joint in the car, but no one ever says anything about that because they say, oh, well, the water can't stick in there. Okay, granted. So, a normal lap joint, let me get these two pieces here, when people moan about, is because if you stick two pieces together, you get this lip underneath here and the water can sit there. That's fine, but the way I'm gonna do it is like this. So the lips underneath, the water will just drain straight off. And then once I wax oil it under here, it's not gonna be a problem. So. I might not be able to do it with this because of the way it's done, but I'm going to try. But the more, the, the thing we need to do first is we need to get this, this panel made. So let me measure up, cut a piece of one mil steel. I'm using one mil cold roll steel, uh, which is essentially what this is. I don't think that's any thicker. I don't think, is it? I don't think so. Anyway, that's what we're going to use. And uh, yeah, let's get repairing. Right, this is going to be nothing fancy. I've got my 17 mil spanner. I've got my piece of metal, which I've put a bit of flash rust on it, but no big deal. I've roughly marked where the, where the need to be. I'm just going to lay this down. 
This, I might have to do this slightly different, but you're going to get the idea. And just... Hit around that spanner, and look already, look what that's done. So once I do that on the other side, which is here, You can see quite quickly, look, we're getting that indentation. Yes, the metal warp in a little bit, but we can just straighten that back. That's no big deal. Get that straight. But you can see quite quickly. Just what you can get. Look at that. And we just bend. I'm just going to line that up with the one on the van, just see the rough shape, and then uh, I'll get back to you. Right, it's close, it just needs to be deeper. So, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make this lift off a little bit more so we can get a slightly deeper groove into it. It's a bit Heath Robertson, I know, but believe me. It works, and once this is inside, you're never going to see this. This is not, you know, we're not restoring a million pound car here. Just want to get something done quickly, but also quite reasonably. Look at that. That is not as refined as that. I need to get that that side. I need to get the spanner in, in the middle. Because when I'm hitting there, I really need to turn it around to hit this side. But I can't do that because I've got it set in the wrong place. So let's just move it over here. Now look at that. See? That is our new indentation and then what I can do I can bend the metal from about here to whatever degrees I need but as you can see very very quickly I'm just going to mark the other one to get the other, the other side done and then uh, we'll go and test for it right when you're doing something like this make sure you cut your metal longer and wider because especially when you're trying to stretch it if you need however so many inches millimeters or whatever when you come to do this, you're going to affect the size of it. So this is oversized for that reason. What I need to do is flatten this. I need to flatten this curve off here so it's easier for me to bend because that's where my bend needs to be. I just want that to be there and not up here anyway i've got my other mark which is about there my other mark there it is so again anything again you can see the twist we're putting in the metal but don't worry about that yet because metal will come back Thing I'm worried about is when this is finished and made is that these three sections here are flat as you can see they're not at the minute so this is going to take a little bit more hammering a little bit more bending a little bit more messing and then I can actually once I get this bit straight at the bottom then I'll do my bend so all I'm literally doing is a bit more of this Bit more bending.
Right now, look at that. We're really, really close. So there's our first one. There's our second one. It's very close to being level. We still got it slightly twisted, but I've got to, I've got to make my bend now. So I've got to work out how far I need my bend um, and exactly where I need it. Once I make my bend, this will automatically become stronger. Then I can do my final little adjustments. But as you can see, we've got them two indentations fairly good and really easy just with a spanner. Right, this is where it goes all wrong and it looks horrible until you kind of finish it. But this, this is gonna be the hardest bit. What I've done is I've made this little template. So I've just got a little piece of, I've cut of steel and I've put this, this is the shape I need to make. This more or less fits the, the panel that's in there. So all I'm gonna do, again, is just put this in the vise. I'm not gonna clamp it down fully because if I clamp it down fully all I'm going to do is squash the um, squash the little things I've made which I don't want to do not fully anyway it's just enough to hold it so what I can actually do is start bending this is where my back struggles What I should really do is just mark it actually. Let me just mark this off camera. I'm just going to put this on here and mark where my two lines need to be. My Tipex pen decided to explode, so my lines aren't great, but it gives me a rough idea. What I'm going to do this time, because I've pre stretched my marks, I'm just going to put this into the vise and I'm just going to bend it. I'm not, I'm not bothered about if I straighten that back. Um, because I pre-stretched that piece of metal there so it's going to be easier for me to get it back afterwards so I'm just going to I'll get a nicer crisp bend as well Now, where's my piece of metal? We can line that up with a piece of metal, look. See the one I made the template off? So now I know I need to bend the other mark the other way. So, I'll go around this way this time. And start at the edge. What I need to do is bend it the opposite way. So this now needs to be bent, yeah, this way. Now oh, I need a... Now, look at that. Yeah, I've lost my indentations, but I can get them back very, very quickly. And I'll tell you something, that isn't half bad, is it? Look at that. So let's test fit this on. So I've trimmed it more or less to length now. It fits within the panel we need because we, we, we don't want to go off it to here. So it fits within there and it lines up really, really nice. Nice and flat at the bottom, the curves there. And as you can see, well, I say absolutely flat, but more or less flat 
across the top. So that's really good. What I got to do now is put my two reliefs back. You can see that they're still here. This metal has been pre-stretched, so it's going to make it a lot easier for me to actually um, push that down now. It's still going to warp this panel a bit, but at least this metal has already been pre-stretched. Right, I'm going to do this a slightly different way this time, and hopefully it's going to work. This is just makes the whichever one you do first when the, the second bend or the second thing you ever do always makes the metal just act really funny but what i've done is i got some spanners underneath to support the weight but enough gap for what i need and then all i'm going to do is get with my hammer and chisel and just Start putting some dints in there, literally. Can't really put it in the vise because of the pen that's already in it. And it won't, uh, it'll straighten out my bends, which, are, which is what I don't want. So this will, oh, hold on, maybe I can do it without the, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm going to use the 17 mil spanner again, kind of tied down, because that will give me a base to work from. Do it the other way. There we go, that's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. A nice sharp bend. Now, looks really bad at the minute, doesn't it? But once we start getting that flat again, our indentation will come out. <laughs> this is moving. Let me get this in the middle. As you can see, we're getting them back. Still got the bends there. It's a bit twisted, but we're getting them back. So you look at that, we're still a little bit high, but, and that one, that one, I need to do a bit more work on that one. That one's a lot better. But you can see what I'm doing. All right, I just want to show you this. So this is the panel we're going to be using. This is what our panel looks like. See that? See them two little indentations there? We still got a slight issue with the fitment, but because we've, because we've bent this and hit this and bent this and hit this, we're not going to be able to put this back in the vise and bend it. I've slightly lost the shape there. That's why it's not fitting that panel very well. But what we can do with a nice little hammer, we can localize the bending. So. I'm working from the bend down. Get it? Bend down. This. He's now putting our bend back. So we got our bend back. Ah, 
a lot better. I can just keep working out the height box. See, that's fitting a lot better now. So, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same with this line here. Bend it back. Yes, look, there's easy ways of doing this. With the right tools, but I'm just showing you very simple, with very simple tools, the panels you can make. Once I hammer form all this and get all these little bumps out, I'm not going to go mental on it because it's, it's only the inside panel, but I'm going to make it look a lot better than that. As you can see, now I'll just look at the fitment. So I've still got a little bit of work to do up here. The two edges are now good, so it's just a little bit more work in the middle. Ah, look at that. We're really, really close now. Yes, our two little indentations are slightly different, but I'm not bothered about that. I'm not going to spend the extra time and effort it's going to take to get that right for what this is. So let me just spend a few more minutes just hammering this and then we can uh, hopefully fit it. Oh, did I not fucking record? Oh, I pressed the wrong button on the stupid camera. I recorded as I was pulling away, not as I was doing it. I've cut out these little notches here because, because I didn't put my notches in exactly the same place. It was, it was causing me problems. But as you can see, we are more or less really, really close for that to line up. I've got a little bit more movement of the metal just to twist this in this way and a little bit more in the middle, but we've got the steps. We've got absolutely everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish off doing this, getting this ready, because we're going to, the way I'm going to weld this in most probably is going to be tack welding it in place, cutting it and then welding it properly. And then removing the piece that's left. That's what I'm guessing. I'm going to weld it from this side out because it's easier for me to do that at the minute. And then, because I've still got work to do inside here. So I need to get this on so I can get this panel on. Then I can worry about coming on the inside, re-welding this and grinding it all. But if I weld it from the inside out and then weld it from this side, it's going to be nice and strong. All right, what I've got to do is, because this is all really weak and flimsy, it's all misshapen. And my panel is more or less kind of straight all the way across and it's just causing me problems. So I'm going to cut just the angles off. <laughs> Now one thing I'm not doing, I'm not completely cutting this off here so I know where my panel needs to line up because otherwise if I completely cut it off I don't know if I'm too high or too low or anything like that. So my, my body panel won't line up properly. I'm going to use this line and this line over here to know that I'm still in the right, exactly the right spot. <laughs> See, our panel lies on here, so we know we've got it right. And the little bit of bending that I need to do on the top, I'm going to actually do that on the car. So I'm going to weld these sides to it and bend this and weld it at the same time so I know I've got it in absolutely perfect. So yeah, it's looking good. We are going to be using the awesome Feronius Transteel 2200 MIG welder. This thing is absolutely unbelievable. I've done lots of videos on it. Right, when I was using this last time, we must have been using 3mm steel. So, we are now welding 1mm steel. And I know everyone struggles with, you know, how to set your welder. Are you ready? You ready? Boom, there we go, one mil. That's it, done. It does everything for me. The synergy mode, it does 
everything for me. Unbelievable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually weld this on. So I can do this two ways and I'm still undecided. I can just weld this directly on top of that metal there and then make another piece of metal for underneath on the inside, box it in. Or what I can do, which is what I was originally planning on doing, is tack welding this around, cutting the tack welds and then pushing this level and then welding it um, so it's all one piece, which I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, this is one mil steel as well, it feels like, it doesn't feel like it's anything stronger. It's all lapped over the top of each other in other places, so doing it either way really isn't a big deal, but doing it the first way I suggested is a lot more work because I have to and then make another panel for the other side. So at least this way, this panel is made and then our other panel comes on top. So it's a little bit quicker. And when you're welding a car or a van or anything and you know, the engine and everything is in, obviously disconnect the battery. Um, kind of goes without saying. Make sure you disconnect the battery first because you can cause all sorts of problems. And then double check to make sure there's no issue with wires or fuel systems or anything like that. Because it's the last thing you want to do, is then blow yourself up. Right, I just need to get a tack just to hold it first in place. need to get my uh, shield and I'm kind of doing this with no shield which isn't great right, it's just for the first two tacks now synergy mode sounds a bit different so when you think oh that's well it's not set up properly it doesn't sound right it's because it's synergy mode Right, so we're going to go around and make a few tacks. Now, what I've seen people do, a lot of people do, it's not too bad for this, but when you're doing, especially on an outside panel, I see them when they tack weld, because you have to tack weld a, a car panel. You can't do a full seam. Even if you could, it would warp the shit out of the metal. You would never get it right. Um, they tack it, then they get the airline, and they cool, cool it down with the airline. Whenever you weld something, especially MIG or when you go over 700 or is it 1300 degrees um, it's going to shrink the metal it just will and then you put in cold air to it it's going to shrink it even more which causes more warpage so you don't don't use an airline to cool it down just literally you're going to have to wait if if this here was on this panel and let's say I was restoring a car to weld this here 17 18 inches whatever it is could take maybe an hour and a half because you're putting spots every say inch waiting 15 20 minutes maybe even longer for the panel to cool down then come back and do another line of spots wait another 5 10 15 minutes and then that's what takes the time you're not physically welding for all them hours but you're you have to let it cool down and i see i, I just see people do it and i think it's it's not right. Well, it's not, it's not right, but it's going to cause you more issues. So I'm just trying to get all the four corners down before I worry about anything else. There we go. Now, that's all four corners down. You can see we've got a little bit of a lip at the top, but I can actually bend that into shape. But that is our panel, essentially there. Our bends are good. Yeah, we've got a few little dints here. I could have made it better, but again, spending another hour or so, an hour and a half on that panel, making it look perfect. There's no need, because you're not going to see the inside of it. And when I put, um, all the all the stone chip on the other side of it you're not going to see it so it really makes no difference there's no there's no uh, point making it too neat again you're not restoring something that's worth millions of pounds here
right, that's it tapped into place. So now I'm still undecided what I'm going to do, which way I'm going to go around it. One thing I am happy with, I'm really happy with the fitment of it. I just don't know. Let's keep an eye up. I just don't know if I'm going to. I don't know if I'm just going to weld that in and then make a panel for the other side. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to weld this in place and weld another panel um, because this is. This is slightly thicker than this. So, the other panel should be a lot simpler to make. So at least now I'm just gonna continue welding all this all the way across. I might knock off the heads of the weld, but I'm not gonna do any grinding, not gonna do anything because at the end of the day, this is not gonna be seen. What I will do is, I will, once I've done this, I will put some sealer on here, just to seal that in, just to stop any of the, any of the uh, rust settling but once I squirt through these holes uh, from the back of this panel and to this panel with um, wax oil once I've got it all done it's going to protect it as well right normally you wouldn't do it like that because you're worried about heat but I'm not worried about heat on this particular panel what I am worried about is I don't want to be going past here because this has to be nice and flat so I'm gonna have to leave that I might what I'll do is once I've done the other plate on the other side I think I'll just spot weld them all together but I'm gonna have to knock off that and knock off that when I actually come to put the new panel on Also, why I can get away with putting a lot more heat, especially in these corners, is because of the bends of the metal. And I know what I said, I shouldn't go down there, but what I can actually do is, I can knock off the head of the grinder. Because, the, see this overlap here, I'm doing the same. So I can, I can actually weld to here, but smoothing it off with the grinder, so it, the, there's no step. And again, just like that. So our new panel is going to go across there quite nicely. Now what I've got to be careful of is I'm not setting fire to anything because there's all that all the sealer behind there. Right, you really don't need to see me now. I'm gonna spot weld, leave it a few minutes, spot weld, leave it a few minutes, spot weld, leave it a few minutes, until I go all the way across. You don't need to see that. But I'll turn the camera back on once I've finished. Right, that's all welded in really nicely. We've still got our little indentations there. Nice and strong, looking lovely. And from in here, again, looks really nice. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to get another piece of, I'm not going to film this because I've already basically done it. I'm going to get another piece which I've just already cut. And as you can see, what I can do is, I can weld that in there. And then on the other side, which I'll show you once I've done it, I'm just going to weld the bottom. I was going to put some spot welds in it, but I'm going to weld the bottom around the edge just to give it a lot more strength. Even though this doesn't really need strength, it's not as if you're jacking up a car from this point. But I'm just making it a hell of a lot stronger kind of than what it needs to be but at the end of the day I don't think there's anything wrong with that I keep forgetting I said from now on I'm just going to basically film everything make my videos a lot longer get a lot more information in there and see what people think um, and go from there but one thing I don't know if I mentioned yet look at this 
huge crack. I can actually put my finger inside there and that wasn't noticed on the DOE. Now we're going to replace that. That is so that how did he not notice? He noticed all these other things that like you've seen in my other videos that really really wasn't gone but how do you miss that? Like look at look at, I'll get you closer in a minute. Actually I'll forget so I'll do it now. Look, look at that crack. Look how big it is. Anyway. It is what it is. Oh, what did I do with my grinder? Right, what I can actually do on this side is I can cheat. I don't have to do all the special metal shaping that I've done on the other side. I'm just going to put this plate on here. I'm going to start welding the top. Get, the, get, get it set into the right place. Then, with the hammer, I'm just gonna dint the two ends in and weld them. And then I'm gonna weld this bottom lip and it saves me having to do all these again. It saves me having to do everything because this side is not, this, this, this is where the issue is with all, all the water and stuff trapping. This is not the issue here. Um, but what I might do is, I might just leave little ones just at the edge of there just in case there is any issue so the water can kind of go from there. <laughs> I like to call this body shaping because I'm shaping it on the body. Um, you know, again, you have to pick and choose your your uh, your battles because you know you're not gonna. This is just a van that we're repairing. It's we're not we're not doing anything, restoring anything. We're not doing anything like that. We're still it's still gonna be strong. It's still gonna be good, um, but you're not gonna see this. So I'm not even gonna grind off the welds here. You're not going to see, you're not going to, you're not, it's not, you, you know, it's not going to affect anything. So, um, yeah, you just have to pick your battles. And in this case, I know for what we're doing, this is going to be more than good enough. I didn't press record on the camera. Lucky enough, I didn't do too much. I've only got a couple of spots in there. Um... But uh, essentially this, this body shaping, what I call it, is really handy because depending on what you're doing, you know, it can really save a lot of time. It's only really good for places where you can't see. So like inside, in a, inside sills and underneath and outside the car. But when you're doing anything on th that's, that is visibly seen, it's, it doesn't really work very well because you know, it just causes too many problems. But you'd be amazed if, if you had rust in here, for example, you could just cut a, a flat piece of metal, weld it across here and bend it, weld it, bend it and weld it. You'll be amazed what shapes you can actually get by doing it that way. Uh, it saves a hell of a lot of time and it's brilliant for certain circumstances. Again, it's like everything. It's all for the, for the circumstances you're doing it in. Like I said, anything that is shown, it doesn't really work. Here, where you've got a lot of structure behind and a lot of strength because of all these bends, you'd be amazed just what sort of um, shapes you can get out of it. So I'm just going to continue welding across there. I'm not going to touch here or here yet. Once I've got all this welded across here, I'm going to spot weld it at the bottom a few times to kind of keep this panel in. Then I'm going to body shape it. Um, and I'm only body shaping the edges just to blend in with the edge. This is still going to be flat. You could come in here afterwards and actually, you know, body shape it. But look, there's no point. It's just time wasted. Um, what I am going to do is, which I don't think I recorded this because I wasn't, the camera wasn't on. Um, I didn't put any paint or anything on the, in behind here because the panel is so small. I'm welding all the way around it. The heat's just going to burn anything I put in there. It's just going to be pointless. So what I'm going to do at the end, I'm going to drill a couple of holes or maybe just one hole here in the middle. And when I wax oil this, I'm going to wax oil inside here too and I'm going to put a little plug on. As you can see, these are big holes here. There's no plugs, there's no nothing in here. So, you know, having holes in the panel isn't really a big deal. But I'm just going to put a little bit, little plug in here uh, so we can remove that plug and wax oil this whenever we want, basically. And again, load of wax oil inside there. Uh, but I, I'll be able to do some sort of painting inside here 
because it's a bigger panel. But the wax oil in it is, is what's really going to um, protect it more so than the paint. I will do that without a mask because the mask is hitting off the exhaust. I'm obviously not looking at it as I'm touching the welder, but it makes it a lot harder to do it this way. Because the mask keeps you on track. I think I'm actually getting in the way of the camera now welding. Anyway, once I've welded the top of that, I'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you what I mean. Right, you can now see, hopefully, I've welded all the way across there. And like I said, I'm just gonna knock the head of them welds off and I'm just gonna put some seal around it. I'm not gonna make it completely smooth or anything like that. I could do, but again, there's just no point. For the time and effort it's going to take, there is no point. Now, on this one, you can see we're absolutely perfectly level with the bottom. On this one, this metal is sticking out down too far. So, with the metal shaping we're going to do, if I start hitting in this, it's going to pull up this piece of metal here, and it's going to make it not level. So I'm going to have to weld the bottom before I, um, I body shape this. But this one, on the other hand, I need it to lift up. So all I'm going to do <laughs> hopefully you can see that that is absolutely bob on now you might not be able to see but believe me absolutely bob on and all I've got to do Like I said, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Same this end. I'm not going to completely do it all in there because again, there, there is absolutely no point doing it for this particular fix. Um, it, it really doesn't make sense. So all I'm going to do now is now I'm going to somewhat. Again, I'm going to have to do this without a mask because it's just I can't mask in properly. Once you've got a bit of weld on it, if you need to do any more, you can. This is the problem, I can't see what I'm doing. I have to look away before I strike the welder. But I can't wear the mask because it won't fit underneath with the way I've got the van. Bit of a hole here, I'm just going to fill in. Go around it with the welder and then fill in the middle. But again, so much easier with the mask on. I can see exactly what I'm doing. One more. One more. That's it. Now, that is done. Well, I just got to do the top. I get to the top. So as you can see, there was never any lines put in this anyway. Um, all these structure lines were at the top. So yes, this had a little bit of an angle to it all the way across, but that's the only thing. Um, I could just come in with the hammer and actually do that, but there's, there's just really no need. Uh, on this side, what I have to do is slightly different, is I have to just weld the bottom, pinch the bottom first. Because I don't want this to move, I, I didn't mind that moving, I need this to now stretch where all that was doing was moving, but now I've pinched the bottom with the weld, this has to stretch, it can't do it. And 
as you can see, it's gone in. So all I gotta do now, just get a tiny spot weld there. Get a bit of strength to that. Right, now come on the bottom. And as you can see now, I've just stretched that panel. So this is just going to be a nice flat panel. We've got two panels there, super strong, thicker than the original, but one of these together wasn't. I'm using one mil. I think this was originally 1.2. So there's now two mil of steel. Actually, there's actually going to be three mil on this lip because there's another one mil of the um, of the outer arch to go on there. So this is going to be really strong, this lip. Um, but that's how your body form. That world would look a million times better if I had my mask on, but look, it doesn't matter. It's never going to be seen. Um, but there we go. So all I've got to do now is, which I'll do from the other side, is I'm just going to weld across this lip here at the bottom. Um, or I might, I still might just plug weld it or even spot weld it, because I've got a spot welder. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, but... That is as strong as you like, so there we go. Right, I know what some people might be thinking. Well, why bother putting all this shape into it if you just put a, a panel at the back like that? Well, this is the strength. I put the shape in for the strength, but hopefully you can really see the good indentation I got. It's, it's nearly as thick as my finger indentated in there. Do you know, it really, the, because of the way the metal is, is shiny, it doesn't really show it properly, and it doesn't look as good on camera as it does in real life. I've welded it all underneath here and I've just rounded the weld off. That is as strong as anything. Um, that is a really good repair. So we've now got a base to put our outer panel on. We have to do all that just to put our outer panel on. So I will show you in another video how I actually come to finish this once we get this other panel on. So there's no point doing any more with this until I get all this cut out and get ready for the new panel. Then I'm gonna seal this, paint it, do everything, you know, treat this rust, do all that sort of stuff uh, when it comes a lot closer to that. Check out the other videos on the van that we've done, the mechanical work from the uh, DOE vandalation. Did you get that? Vandalation, because they vandalized the van. Yeah, get it? <laughs> anyway, check out them other videos. Um, and then we've still got plenty more videos coming on the rust repair. But that is essentially how you make an inner panel with very simple tools, very easy. Yes, it takes a bit of time, but you can just see how you can actually get things to, to, you know, to, to, to look fairly okay um, with very, very simple tools. So as always, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below, but most important, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.